Would you rather start Peyton Manning or Brett Favre? The numbers may surprise you. They are pretty close. Who's hot? Who is not? That is the name of this segment. I'm Lauren Shahadi alongside Jamie Eisenberg. It's a good question to have, and it's a good problem to have. And here's our first question of the day. Ready to go? Absolutely. All right, here we go. Typically, I would never bench Peyton Manning, but over the past six weeks, Brett Favre has averaged more points than Manning. I'm in a three-way tie for first in my league and need to finish strong to wrap up the number one spot in the playoffs. Show off. Your thought on this would be greatly appreciated, Jamie. Again, you do a great job reading these questions. I think when you're talking about <laughs> Manning, if this was Eli Manning, then I would maybe make the consideration of benching him for Brett Favre. As great as Brett Favre has played and as fantastic as he's looked all season, I still think you got to keep Peyton Manning in there because the ceiling is still going to be higher for Peyton Manning. You look at the way that he's played over the course of the season. Even though Brett Favre is playing at a high level, you also have to consider the matchup this week. I think you're looking at a situation with Manning against Houston, going to play well. Remember, they're trying to clinch the division, trying for perfection. Listen, they're going to compete to try and have a perfect season and lock up that number one seed, more importantly, in the AFC. I think Peyton Manning still just a smidge ahead of Brett Favre although I can see why you would consider making this type of, of change. Lauren, again, like you said, great problem to have. You probably should have traded one of these guys. Well, that's the biggest Trey, thing. I would take either one of them. I have Carson Palmer and Matt Ryan, so give me one of them, <laughs> and I'll give you them. Second yeah. question of the day. Big Ben, Warner, Tony Romo banged up. What do I do? My question is simple. Romo or Roethlisberger this week? Yeah, I think, all, I think all three are going to play. Um, but I think when you're talking about this scenario, though, Big Ben, better matchup this week. I know that's hard to say when you're talking about a Baltimore defense. But their secondary is banged up. They lose Fabian Washington now. They're missing guys there. They haven't been playing well. You look at Big Ben coming back. He's definitely going to play. Romo's got a little bit of a back issue. And let's not forget, he's playing Oakland, which has done a fantastic job against opposing quarterbacks. They did give up two rushing touchdowns to Carson Palmer last week. But for the most part, they've locked down opposing quarterbacks. Only one quarterback so far this year has thrown for multiple touchdowns, and that was Eli Manning in a half. That was in New York. Tough road trip for them. I think you'll see, even though Romo's got a great history on Thanksgiving, there's going to be a lot of Marion Barber. Ben Roethlisberger is a safer start. Again, good problem to have when you have two quarterbacks like this. But Romo, let's not, keep, let's not forget, struggling the last couple of games. He did Seven a points. Bad job against your Redskins. That's this past right. Week. <laughs> bad job, and he still won. What does that say? But Roethlisberger, yeah. don't, doesn't he seem a bit shaky after that concussion? Wouldn't he be? He could be, absolutely. A bit. And he's facing a tough defense. But yeah. again, it's a tough defense that may not Out have Terrell Suggs and as a banged up secondary. All right, how long should I hang on to Brian Westbrook? That's the question from Mike, and it's kind of my question as well, Jamie. Yeah, if you have the chance to pick up somebody else, and I think that's who he's looking for, who are some guys out there that you could pick up? Now, you probably should have done this last week when you saw all these injuries, and as we talked about in Move Makers on our previous video, you're talking about guys like Jason Snelling, Justin Forsett, Bernard Scott, those guys were probably still available. If they're available now, definitely drop Brian Westbrook and pick one of those guys up because Brian Westbrook may not play for another two or three weeks. He may not play for the rest of the season. And we're talking fantasy playoffs typically begin week 14. So if you have the chance to pick somebody up, maybe even a guy like Rock Cartwright at this point because Clinton Portis also with the concussion and we know Liddell Betts is out for the season. It depends on what your roster looks like and it depends on who else is out there. But I think if you have the chance to get somebody who's going to help you, and let's not forget, it doesn't have to be running backs. It could be a wide receiver, it could be another quarterback, tight end. We've seen guys like Jermichael Finley and Kevin Boss creep up. Chris Chambers is available, Jason Avant. There are guys out there at other spots that could help you out. So definitely drop Brian Westbrook if there's somebody out there for you. Jamie, here's another guy. Well, some of us are struggling. This guy's just in deep with all these running backs. Adrian yeah. Peterson, Chris Johnson, Ricky Williams, who do I bench? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a tough call because obviously you drafted Peterson and Johnson to be your starters, and then here comes Ricky Williams at 32 years old with Ronnie Brown now out of the season with his foot injury. It's a tough call. If you look at our rankings this week, you'll see all three are in the top five, at least for me. I can't speak for Dave, but, you know, Dave does a great job, and you'll have to check out his rankings on his own. My rankings, I think you have all three guys in the top five for obvious reasons, but Chris Johnson's number one, Adrian Peterson's number two, and then Ricky falls in behind those guys. you got to bench Ricky Williams. I know he's playing well, but still, those other two guys, they're MVP candidates. That was a question, Billy from Madison. <laughs> Chris Johnson, Billy Madison. No questions there. No? Last well, question of the day. You guys aren't getting it. Uh, from Corey in Fort Lauderdale, is it time to consider Steve Slayton a must-start fantasy option again? I'm just afraid he's going to fumble and I'll be stuck with zero points. Yeah, it's going to be a fear with Steve Slayton because we saw what happened a couple weeks ago against Buffalo. He fumbled. He was taken out of the game. He didn't start the next game. Ryan Motes did. But we know Monday night against Tennessee, he was back in the starting lineup. He finds a way to get it done. I know you're seeing Chris Brown take some touches away from him. and He's got somewhat of a tough matchup against the Colts, but he does it all. He catches the ball in the backfield. He's the guy they look to in the red zone, even though Chris Brown's bigger. He's the guy I think that's going to give you double digits in fantasy points. And let's not forget, a couple weeks ago, even though he was benched against the Colts, still scored a touchdown. So they know that they have to have this guy on the field. I love the move back to him as the starter. And when you're talking about fantasy production, 
That's really all that matters. Forget about who's getting more carries. It's who's the guy that's producing. He's producing solid number two fantasy running back. So the good outweighs the scare. Absolutely. Okay, good. If you want to send questions, where do you send them? DM? DM fantasy football at cbs.com. DM fantasy football at cbs.com. And, <laughs> and if you put Lauren in the subject line, <laughs> we will definitely read it on the air. <laughs> and if you watch fantasy football today, your fantasy team will win. That is just the way it goes. For Jamie Eisenberg, I'm Lauren Shahadi. We'll talk to you soon.